Hello and welcome back to Understanding the Gospel. My name is Lee Robinson. I'm from Citywide Baptist Church in New London. Uh, we're located at 325 Broad Street in New London. Uh, for anyone that, that may be watching, uh, 325 Broad Street in New London. We have services at uh, Sunday at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we also meet Sunday evenings and uh, Tuesday evenings at 7 o'clock as well. Uh, so if you live in the New London area, we, we'd love to have you come down uh, more, than, uh, more than welcome to come and visit sometime. And also, uh, we do have a YouTube channel uh, called Meet with the Lord. Uh, that's Meet with the Lord on YouTube. Go on there, and uh, we have some videos on there. So uh, make sure you check out those resources. But again, this is uh, under, Understanding the Gospel, a 12-week teaching series. Uh, we're going through what the Bible teaches about the gospel. Uh, we saw from our first lesson what the gospel is. It's the good news that Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, uh, the eternal God of the Bible, He became flesh, He died for our sins, He rose from the dead, and today He sits at the right hand of the throne of God to make intercession for us so we can be forgiven of our sins and have eternal life. Uh, as we talked about in the beginning, uh, most people know that Jesus died for their sins and rose from the dead, uh, but, the, but the part that um, is missing is the understanding part, realizing why that's so important, uh, why it's of eternal importance that we understand the gospel. It means the difference between eternal life and eternal separation from God. Um, as Jesus said, the, the first words of Jesus preaching when he came into the world, he said, repent and believe the gospel. Uh, that is the message that Jesus is preaching. That's the message that his followers have always been preaching. And that's the message that we are preaching uh, going through 12 weeks, understanding the gospel. Uh, this is our ninth week. Uh, what we've gone through so far, I wanted to run through uh, the, the uh, episodes that we've had so far. Uh, the first week, we dealt with authority, uh, the fact that uh, there is a God that we're accountable to. Uh, then we talked about law, the Ten Commandments, that we've broken God's laws. Uh, and that led into what is the true definition of righteousness or goodness, uh, who, is, who is truly a good person? We saw the Bible says that there's none good, no, not one. We've all broken God's laws. We've all offended his authority. Our fourth uh, lesson, we saw punishment, what, the, what we deserve from breaking God's laws. We saw from Luke chapter 16, uh, the, the story about the rich man and Lazarus, that what we rightly deserve because of our sin is eternal separation from God uh, in the lake of fire. Uh, but we saw that it uh, started to get into the good news. That's the, that's the bad news. Uh, but the good news we started to see is that God's desire is not that we would be punished. That's not his desire. His desire is uh, of love and compassion. He's a God of mercy. And he showed that mercy. He showed that love uh, by providing a sacrifice for us, uh, that Jesus came. Uh, and we saw, we took a whole uh, an hour to look at who Jesus is, that he was not just uh, a great teacher or a, a great prophet, but he was in fact the eternal son of God that came to die to give his life as an offering, a sacrifice for our sins. And uh, last week we saw uh, that not only did Jesus Christ die for our sins, uh, but he, he overcame the grave. Uh, last week we talked about uh, mankind, our, our greatest enemy is that of death, that uh, because of our sin we deserve to die. Uh, God's intention was not to create this world so we would die. Uh, death is not natural. It's a result of the curse. Genesis chapter 3, God said to Adam and Eve, uh, if, you, if you eat the fruit that I told you not to eat from, that in that day you will surely die. Uh, that's a curse from God. He said, from dust thou art, to dust you shall return because you sinned against me. We saw importantly that uh, in that day, Adam and Eve did not die as God said, they did not die physically, but they did die spiritually. We saw that uh, mankind is made up of a body, soul, and a spirit. And uh, the, the really, really bad thing is that not that people are dying physically, uh, but that people are already dead spiritually. We're born dead in our sins, separated from God. 
And uh, there's no way that we can get out of that. It's, a, it's the curse. It's the, the worst enemy that's happened to mankind, death, spiritual death and physical death, uh, which no religion can overcome that. No religion has conquered it. No religious teacher, p- uh, pastor, uh, priest, prophet, no one has overcome this greatest enemy, that of death, except for one, Jesus Christ, by raising from the dead uh, and sitting at the right hand of God. And he is able to give life. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever leaves, lives and believes in me shall never die. Uh, so that brings us uh, to tonight, uh, week number nine. And uh, so we could put the question out there and say, okay, well, and I actually had somebody say this not too long ago to me. Uh, since, since Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world, right? He died for the sins of the whole world. Every sin that's ever been committed by every person, Jesus died for them. Okay, he died for the sins of the world. He rose from the dead, right? He defeated our greatest enemy. So doesn't that mean that we're all forgiven, right? Doesn't that mean all, all of our sins are forgiven and we have eternal life now? Um, well, no. Uh, it's, and the, the point is, is that the work that needed to be done, yes, the work is done. Jesus did all the work on the cross. Uh, he said on the cross, it is finished. Those were his last words before he died. Uh, what is finished? The work, the work of redemption, the, the, the work, the payment for men's sins uh, was, was paid for. It was done. He said, it is finished. Uh, he's, he's risen from the dead. He sits at the right hand of God. Okay, but uh, if you want to say it this way, um, the work that God did is complete, and now the ball is in our court. All the work is complete. However, um, every individual that's come into this world, we have the choice whether to accept the work that was done on our behalf by Christ or uh, the, the opportunity to reject it. Um, so there's something that we need to do. And the Bible teaches us that there's two things that we need to do and in order to have eternal life, in order to have forgiveness of sins. These are not considered works by God. These are not things that we actually uh, set out to do to um, earn favor with God. These are things that happen inside of our hearts. And those two things, which we're going to talk about uh, tonight and next week, is that we need to repent and believe. And that's exactly the message that Jesus preached, Mark chapter 1 and verse 15. The work has been accomplished, the good news, it's already been done, but we need to do something. We need to repent and believe. And tonight what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about repentance. What, what is repentance? What does it mean to repent? It's one of, one of the two essentials of becoming a Christian, of having our sins forgiven. Uh, we see in the book of John in chapter 1, we see this uh, where it says, uh, I believe in verse number 11 of chapter 1, it talks about Jesus and it says that Jesus came unto his own and his own, but his own received him not. Uh, and it's talking about the Jewish people that although Jesus came, the Messiah came to his people, uh, even though he did come and he did the work, the problem was is that they, they didn't accept him. They rejected him. And so he did not, he was not their Messiah. His sacrifice did not help them at all. And the same thing is true today. Uh, Jesus did all the work, but you can either accept it or reject it. Um, now, as we, as we uh, get into this a little bit, I want to just um, mention again a few words that the Bible talks about, um, that talks about our salvation, uh, talks about how to be forgiven, our, forgiven of our sins. And um, those words are this, just to um, rehearse this a little bit. Uh, one of the words is the word atonement, atonement, or to atone for our sins. What do we really want? What do we really need? Uh, we need atonement. And what that word means is it means to be at one or to stand as an equivalent. We've seen that the bad news is that we've fallen short. We're under God's law. We're guilty. Uh, the wrath of God is uh, against our sin. We deserve to be punished. And what we need is we need to somehow be right with God, to stand at one with him, stand as, as an equivalent. We need to be righteous before him. Um, it's, it's amazing. Most people that... Um, I talk to, and if I ask them the question, you know, do you, do you want to, uh, do you want to die or do you want to go to hell? Usually the answer is no, of course not. Well, well of course not. Um, I want to go to heaven. So we need to understand what that takes. It takes absolute perfection, absolute righteousness. We need an atonement. We need a payment for our sins. Uh, that's what we're looking for. Another word, justify. 
um, to be declared righteous before God. Uh, another word is the word reconcile, that we were enemies of God, um, but I need to be reconciled to him, be brought back into friendship. How do these things happen? How, how do my sins get forgiven? Um, how are my sins atoned for? How am I reconciled to God? How am I justified before God? How can I know for sure I'm on my way to, way to heaven? That's what we're getting at. And it starts, if you really want to know, it starts with repentance. Now, what I want to do is look at, first of all, for a little while, I want to look at what the scriptures show that um, this is very much a teaching of the Bible that we need to repent. Uh, then after that, I want to define what repentance is, illustrate it a little bit. Uh, and then as we close, I want to talk about confession, um, repentance and confession. Uh, so first of all, I want to look into the scriptures that this is the, the teaching of the Bible. Um, and to start off, Mark chapter 1, verse number 15, clearly uh, Jesus' message is that we need to repent and believe the gospel. Um, but secondly, I want to turn over to Mark chapter number 2 in verse number 15. And um, the Bible says this, it says, And when the scribes and Pharisees saw Jesus eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So, uh, th this idea of repentance here, it, it fits right into the idea of self-righteousness. Uh, if we read the Bible, you'll find these guys, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, uh, the Sadducees. And uh, many times these, uh, these, these guys, uh, they were self-righteous. And what does it mean to be self-righteous? It means that instead of um, acknowledging their sinfulness before God and confessing their sinfulness, their need for a Savior... Um, instead of that, what they did was they saw themselves as, as good people. They saw themselves, hey, I have no need for a repentance. I have no need for a savior. Um, I am a good person. They were self-righteous. They thought within themselves that they were good enough to please God, uh, which we saw uh, way back about true goodness, uh, that they were, this caused them to be very proud, very haughty. If you uh, have ever heard the phrase, holier than thou, that's exactly what uh, this was referring to, is these people right here. They were holier than thou. They saw themselves as better than the, than the publicans and the sinners and the prostitutes and the drunkards. They saw themselves as better than them. So as a result, hey, they had no need for a doctor. They had no need for a physician, a savior. Okay, but what we see Jesus here say, says, is he says straight out, he says, they that are whole have no need of, of a physician. He says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Um, Jesus is not looking for people who think to themselves, I have a problem, and so therefore what I need to do is go clean myself up. Um, that's not repentance. Repentance is not when you think to yourself, man, I really want to go to heaven, so I need to get myself cleaned up. I need, to, I need to dress better. I need to go to church. I need to start doing good deeds. And not just as a hypocrite, but really in my heart. I really, I need to clean myself up. I mean, God's so holy I really need to straighten up before him. Okay, we're seeing that's not repentance because Jesus says right here, I didn't come to call the righteous. I'm not looking for people who think that they have it all together, um, people who are cleaning themselves up. Jesus says, I'm looking for sinners that have repentance. We're going to look more at what that means, but that's what Jesus is looking for. He's preaching, repent. He's looking for people who, need that, who know that they need to repent. Um, if we flip over to the book of Luke, in chapter number 13, uh, we see something over here as well. Um, and what we find is this. I'll, I'll read the scriptures. Uh, it says, There were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Okay, so um, there was these Galileans, and uh, apparently they, uh, they did something wrong. And as a result, the, the governor, Pilate, he ended up um, killing them and mingling their blood with sacrifices. It was just, th there was a judgment that came on these Galileans. And what Jesus said was this. Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things? Um, so Jesus used these Galileans and what happened to them as an example. He said, hey, you see these bad things that happened to them, right? Um, do you think that means that they were worse than everybody else? He could, he could already read what they were thinking um, because of this circumstance. 
but in uh, Luke 13, verse 3, Jesus says, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Um, in other words, what Jesus is saying is don't look out at the world and think to yourself, man, look at those people. Yeah, they really need God. They need to repent. Uh, we find this often. If you, if you go out on the streets and talk to people about God, uh, every once in a while you'll, uh, you'll have people say, actually, hey, hang, hang on a second. Hey, you know, you need to talk to this guy. Can you go talk to my neighbor? He really needs to be saved. He needs to repent. Um, that's exactly what Jesus is telling us not to do. We shouldn't look out other, at other people and say, yeah, they need to repent, but not me. Um, notice another little story he says in verse number four. Um, he says, Or those 18 upon whom the, tire, the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all that dwelt in Jerusalem? So apparently there was this tower, there was people in there, the tower fell and killed all the people. Jesus says, I tell ye nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Jesus is saying, it doesn't matter who they were, whether they were good or bad, um, judgment came on them. And you, it's same thing with you, unless you repent, you will also perish. Okay, uh, let's go over to Luke chapter number 15. Uh, Luke chapter number 15, we see another teaching of Jesus. What we're doing is we're laying a foundation in the Bible right now uh, to show that repentance is absolutely necessary, first from Jesus Christ himself. Uh, Luke chapter 15, uh, Jesus uh, says these things. It says, He spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you... Having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which have no need of repentance. Uh, so Jesus tells this little story, and he says that there was a man that had a hundred sheep, and he lost one of the sheep. It went off and it was lost in the wilderness. Uh, and because he loved that sheep, he went out, he found the sheep, brought him back home, and he was rejoicing. Uh, he called all of his neighbors together, come home and rejoice with me. I found my sheep. And he says, such is the case that when one person um, repents of their sins, uh, there's joy in the presence of God. There's joy with the angels. All of heaven breaks out in this celebration when one person on the face of, the face of this earth repents of their sins before God. <clears throat> uh, notice also, this is another thing that the, the Bible teaches us in many different places, uh, the idea of being lost. Uh, I had somebody say to me today that, uh, that before they uh, came to God, before they were born again, before they became a Christian, they said, yeah, I felt lost. Uh, I felt the same way myself. And what we're saying is, is that I was away from God, a, 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 apart from God. It's like I was in the desert all alone when it came to God. I didn't know him. I wasn't in his home. I wasn't in his family. I wasn't found. Uh, just like the song, Amazing Grace. Uh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. That's the, if you're, if you're lost, if you're in your sins, if you have not known God, have not your sins forgiven, we are lost. And the way to be found the, the way to first come to God, the first prayer that God will hear from us is, uh, God, be merciful to me. I am a sinner. We need to repent of our sins. And Jesus uh, says that there's rejoicing in heaven when somebody repents, rather than when there's 99 people who think that they're righteous before God who have no need of repentance. Um, one more place in the teaching of Jesus, Luke chapter 18. Um, in Luke chapter number 18, there's a, there's a story that Jesus taught, and this story is about um, a publican and a Pharisee. And uh, if you know the Bible at all, you know that a, a publican was, was basically somebody that uh, lived a very sinful life. And a Pharisee was somebody who was self-righteous. I want to just read this, uh, this account that Jesus said. It's uh, Luke chapter 18 and verse number 9. It says, and he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. <clears throat> Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, 
would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. So the, the Pharisee comes up and he basically says, you know, God, thank you that I'm, I'm righteous. Thank you that I'm not a sinner like this guy over here. Um, but the, the uh, publican, he comes up, he, he doesn't even want to look up when he prays and he just, he beats on his chest and says, just God, be merciful to me. I'm sinful. I'm a sinner. Now, what did Jesus say about this? You have these two people coming to God. What does Jesus say? Jesus said, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Jesus looked to the man that was down on his knees, beating on his chest. He said, this man is righteous before God. Not because of anything that he did, right? The, the Pharisee, he, he's fasting, he's dressing right, he's going to pray, all these things. Um, but yet that man who did all those religious things, he was not declared righteous before God. Who was declared righteous? It was the guy that was beating on his chest saying, I am a sinner. That's the first step that we need to be, um, to be right with God, to have our sins forgiven is to repent. So we see clearly in the Bible that uh, this is clearly the teaching of Jesus, that we must repent. Um, if you just believe in God and, and say, yeah, I, I believe in God, but there's not repentance in your heart, there is no salvation. We must repent. Uh, now I want to see that this is the teaching of the apostles as well. Not only was this the teaching of Jesus, uh, but it's the teaching throughout the rest of the New Testament. Um, going back to Mark chapter number 6, uh, we see very simply, uh, it says in verse number 12 about the apostles, and they went out and they preached that men should repent. Um, while Jesus was still on the earth, they were preaching that men should repent. Uh, in Acts chapter number 3, in verse number 19, this is after Jesus ascended back up to heaven. Uh, they said these words as they were preaching. They said, repent and be converted that you, so that your sins might be blotted out. Um, their sins being blotted out, or in other words, their sins being removed, erased, forgiven, was contingent upon them repenting of those sins. Um, Acts chapter 17, in verse number 30, uh, we'll read that. Uh, it says this, um, the apostle Paul, he was preaching in Athens at Mars Hill, and he said these things in his preaching. Uh, he said, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. It's a command from God for everyone everywhere to repent of their sins. Uh, we see in Acts chapter 20 in verse number 21, basically the apostle Paul uh, summarized his message and he said, what I've been testifying is repentance toward God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we've laid the foundation. It's clear from the, from the word of God that we need to repent. If we want to be saved, uh, if we want our sins forgiven, we need to repent, okay? So what does it mean to repent? Um, we've already seen that it doesn't mean, first of all, let's see, what is repentance not? Repentance is not when somebody looks at their life and says, wow, God is really holy, um, I need to start cleaning myself up. That is not repentance. That is self-righteousness. That is you trying to cover up your sin, your guilt, your offenses to God's law. It's your attempt to cover it up and try to justify yourself before God. That's self-righteousness, and that is sin in, a, in and of itself. So that's not repentance. Um, what is also, re repentance is also not um, weeping and wailing or just people um, saying that they're sorry, like, you know, if you do something bad and uh, you get caught and then, you know, you feel sorry about it and you just, you just confess it. You say, yeah, yeah, I did it um, so that you can like have a plea bargain or something or, you, you know, you know, you're going to have some kind of judgment happen. And so you just admit, okay, I'm sorry, you know, just so, uh, just so you don't have to um, deal with the consequences or deal with as many consequences. That's not what it means to repent. Repentance is deeper than that. So what is repentance? Um, two things, if you look up the word repent, um, in, in the Bible word that is used is the Greek word metanoia. And if you look at this word, there's two ways we could define the word repent. Um, first of all, to repent means to feel remorse or regret about something that you do. Notice that it says to feel regret or remorse. Repentance on, one, on the one hand is something that happens in my heart. Um, it's a recognition 
what I'm doing is when I'm repenting, I'm recognizing something. I'm recognizing that there is a God, that he has laws. I am res- I'm responsible to keep those laws, but I've not. I've failed. I'm guilty. I'm underneath his law. Uh, I'm, I'm not righteous. I'm not a good person. I'm recognizing that, and I'm feeling remorse about it. God has created me. He's given me every possible uh, opportunity to be righteous before him. Uh, he's given me everything I needed to be right, and yet I've failed God. I've failed the reason why I've been created, um, the purpose for my existence. I've failed. I've strayed away from it. I've gone far away from what God intended for me. He loved me. He made me. He's done everything good for me, and I've rebelled against him. I've been unrighteous. I've been wicked, and I, f- I, feel, I feel bad about this. I'm recognizing that I am not a good person Uh, And so therefore, I feel regret. I feel remorse. I wish I didn't do it. I shouldn't have done it. And now that I did, this is not good. I'm in a bad situation. So on the one hand, to repent, it means to feel in your heart, to to recognize and to feel bad about what you've done, about your sins. Now, uh, number two, on the other hand, uh, and more specifically, the word repent, it means this. It means to change your mind. It means a change of mind. Okay, notice Repentance is to feel regret. That's something that happens in my heart. To change my mind about something is something that happens in my mind. Okay? So what do we see? Repentance, true biblical repentance, is something that happens inside of me. It's something that happens in my heart, the way I feel, and it happens in my mind. Something that I think about myself, about God, about the world around me. Okay, so um, repentance is not about something that I do. Repentance is about something that happens inside in my heart and in my mind. That's what we're talking about. Um, We need a change. In order to be saved, in order to be forgiven, there has to be some kind of change. I have to change. But listen very carefully. This is very important. It's not a change on the outside that I have to change the way that I live in order to be saved. That's what religion teaches. Religion teaches if you want to be saved, you have to change the way you live. You have to change the things you do. That's not what the Bible is teaching. The Bible is teaching that there needs to be a change inside of you, a change in your heart and in your mind. You need to repent. Okay, now, um, what do we need to repent about? Again, it's a recognition in my heart and in my mind. I know that there is a God and I've sinned against him. I feel bad about it. And I'm agreeing now with God. He is right. I'm wrong. I'm not a good person. I deserve to be punished. And I'm changing the way that I think and the way that I feel about God and feel about myself and my sin. Um, I think a good way to, to understand this, what true repentance is, I want to uh, put this illustration out there. Um, get, in your, get into your mind um, a criminal that's on the run. Um, here we, he's, we see someone that uh, they know that they've broken the law uh, and they know that they're guilty and they're on the run. Somehow they, they've gotten away. Uh, they know that the police are chasing after them and they're dealing with this issue, they're, they're running away from it. Um, now imagine this, this person uh, continuing to run away. They're just running as far away from wherever they were, they're as far away from the authorities as they can. They just keep running, they just keep running. You know, uh, I don't deserve to be under this, you know, I don't need to be under this system, I don't need to be under these laws, I'm better than that. I'm running away, just running, running, running. I, I, I want to get away, I don't want to submit to the law and to the authority, I'm, I'm running away. Obviously, there's no repentance in that person. There's no acknowledgement. They, they don't care. They want to get away. They don't want to suffer the punishment. They don't want righteousness to happen. They don't want justice. They don't want peace. Um, they want to be their own authority, be in their own law, be able to sin and go their way. Okay, that's obviously not repentance. Now, I want to make a, a distinction here. What if that person gets to a point and they stop and they think to themselves, you know what? It would be better for me if I stop and turn myself in and admit that I'm guilty because if I do, maybe I'll get some kind of plea bargain. Maybe I, I won't get as many years in prison. Um, maybe, I'll, maybe they'll have mercy on me because I turn myself in. Okay, what about at that point? Is that true biblical repentance? And I would say no. Why? Because they're doing that. They're, they're saying they're sorry and they're turning themselves in for their own gain, for their own benefit, okay? 
That's not true biblical repentance. Now get this picture in your mind, and, and this is where God wants every one of us to come to. Imagine that guy running away, running away, running away, and he finally gets to the place where he knows, he knows that he will not get caught, um, that he's gotten away, he won't get caught, and he's, say he's in a house, he's sitting there, he's thinking to himself, and, and all of a sudden inside of his heart there, there starts this emotion in, in his heart and in his mind, and he thinks to himself, you know what? I live underneath a law. I live underneath an authority. And I've rebelled. I've rebelled against the authority that I'm underneath. I've rebelled. I have broken the law that I'm underneath. And it's good and it's right that I should be punished. I've gotten away. I know they won't catch me. But I've done wrong. I hurt people. Because I did what I did, I offended. I'm, I'm wicked. I'm unrighteous. I'm unlawful. I don't care about other people. I don't care about order or justice or peace. I am bad. And... I don't want to be. I, I want to be right with other people. I want to be right, righteous before um, the society that, that I live in. I want justice to prevail. I did wrong, and therefore I deserve to be punished, so I'm going to turn myself in. This, this is true biblical repentance, the kind of repentance that's needed in order for your sins to be forgiven. It's when a man comes to the realization inside of himself He's not trying to change himself and appear righteous before God. He's not just crying and weeping and saying sorry to God because he doesn't want to go to hell. It's deeper than that. He comes to the place, I realize that God is my authority. I've broken his laws. I am a wicked person. I, I want justice to prevail. I want righteousness and peace and justice. I want those things. And in order for that to happen, I deserve to be punished. But I don't want to be, and see, here's the point. Just, um, I was going to mention this later, but we'll mention it right now. Um, repentance in and of itself cannot save you. Uh, imagine uh, if, if I broke the law and uh, I stood before a judge and they, they read the law, they pronounced my judgment, they said, you're guilty, you deserve to be punished, and, and I felt terrible about it. I started weeping and crying. I, I've, I've done wrong. I deserve to be punished. Um, I'm truly repenting. I, I'm, I'm acknowledging I did wrong, and it, and it was wrong, and I don't want to do it anymore. Um, if I said, please forgive me, judge, I'm sorry, I, I, I repent, what are they going to say? Um, they're going to say, sorry, uh, you know, I, I, I forgive you, but justice needs to prevail. The, the law, there needs to be a punishment here. Um, so just to mention this right now, um, even true repentance in and of it is not good enough to save. As Jesus taught, we need to repent and believe. Next week, we're going to talk about belief. Okay, but you need to have that true repentance coupled together with faith in Christ in order to be truly declared righteous in the sight of God. Okay, so uh, we've seen that this is what the Bible teaches, that we need to repent. Um, we've seen a definition of what it means to repent. It means to, to recognize in your heart and in your mind to change, to actually change in your heart um, what I think about God. He's right, I'm wrong, I deserve to be punished, which brings us into the idea of confession. And I want to spend the rest of our time uh, tonight talking about confession. Um, true, true repentance, it will lead to confession. Um, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9, uh, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful, God is faithful uh, to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So it uses this word confess, if we, if we confess our sins. Uh, what does this word confess mean? We hear about confession, um, the confessional booth, con uh, con to confess, what does it mean? Uh, the word confess, it simply means to say the same thing or to agree. So uh, if, uh, if somebody says a certain truth or something, um, if I was to say, I agree with you, I say the same thing, I'm confessing that. I'm confessing what you said is true. So when it comes to God, was it, what does it mean to confess? Uh, what it means is this, is it means to say the same thing that God says. So what does God say? God says, I am the creator. What do I say? No, you're not God, that's not confession. Confession is to say, yes, God, you are my creator. Um, God says, here's my laws. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not look uh, upon a woman with lust in your heart, etc. 
uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength, what I'm doing is I'm confessing, I'm saying the same thing. God, that is your law. It's wrong to lie. It's wrong to steal. It's wrong to rebel against your parents, etc. Um, and, and God says, what does God say about us? He says, there's none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. What does it mean to confess? It means to say the same thing. Yes, God, you're right. You're my authority. Um, you have laws. I've broken your laws. I'm unrighteous. I deserve to be punished. I deserve to go to hell. It will be right and good and just and holy for you to punish me. I'm confessing that. So true repentance will lead um, in my heart and in my mind to confess to God. God, you're right. You're right. I've done wrong and I deserve to be punished. Um, confession is, is uh, coupled together with repentance is essential to being saved. I want to read some scriptures here um, which teaches us how to be saved. In Romans chapter number 10, uh, it says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice again here, there's nothing said about something that I need to actually do on the outside. There's not, I don't need to change my life to be saved. What does it say I need to do? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that I need to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart. When I believe in my heart the gospel, what Jesus did, when I confess with my mouth that he is the Christ, that I am in need of a Savior, it says that brings me into salvation. That's what causes me to be saved and to be forgiven of my sins. Um, Jesus uh, said these words in um, Matthew chapter 10 and verse number 22. Listen to this. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, him will I confess before my father. Whoever denies me before men, him will I also deny before my father. Um, I want to ask you right now, what, what, is your, what is your confession? And I want to um, put us in a certain scenario. Um, right before we do that, I just want to read one more, uh, one more verse in the book of 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> in verse number 15, it says this, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. Uh, to be in God, to be forgiven, to be saved, to be his child, we need to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, um, I want to put a, uh, think about this scenario here. Imagine for a second if all of a sudden, right now, um, you were in the presence of God. Uh, there was God there on his throne, Jesus sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, angels all around, everywhere, um, innumerable amount of angels, uh, Satan, is, Satan is there, uh, everybody in the world, your family, your friends, the entire world, everybody that you know, the people you went to school with, the people you went to work with, everybody, the whole world, the whole universe is there before the throne of God, and it's your place before judgment, before God. Uh, and, and if God asked you this, um, what is your confession? In other words, what do you think about me? What do you think about all this? Or not, what did you think in your life? Or if he asked you this question, why, why should I let you into heaven? And he has there the books open. There's the book of his law, <laughs> all of his laws. And then there's the book with all of your, your life all of your thoughts, all of your words, all of your actions, all of your motives for everything you did, it's all there. Um, what, what would be your confession? Would you confess to him, God, you are God. You, uh, Jesus, you are the Christ. You have the blood on your hands and on your feet. There is your law. It is true. There's my sinfulness. I deserve to be punished. I deserve to die. All these accusations that are coming from Satan, I, I deserve to die. What would be your confession or would you deny all of that? Um, we have a, a caller coming in in line number one. Hello? Hello? Hi, it's Brother Lee. Hey, Raymond. <laughs> How you doing? I just got home. Good. I'm glad you're watching the show. Yeah. Hey, Lee. What's up? I got a question to ask you, Mark. Okay. Yeah, Mark, let me ask you a question. 
Okay. What well, do you have it meant for a uh, prayer Saturday? Uh, well, it'll be at my house. Men's prayer Saturday. Yeah, my house at noon. Uh, you know, you know why I call. Yeah, I hope to see uh, you there. Moving Saturday. All right. Well, I hope to see you there, Raymond. Yeah, if I have a chance, I'll go. All right. Cool. Bye. All right. Thanks for watching, Raymond. We'll talk to you later. All right, good to hear from Raymond. Uh, again, this is a live show, so if you're watching and um, you have any questions or comments or uh, anything to, to call in about, feel free to call. Uh, the number is up there on the screen. Um, so uh, we're talking about repentance and confession. In order to have our sins forgiven, what, what do we need to do? <clears throat> and um, the Bible says in the book of Romans, in chapter number 14 and verse 11, listen to this. It says that every one of us, that we shall all um, bow our knees before Jesus and every tongue will confess to God. Uh, Jesus said these words, whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Okay, so um, if we live our entire life and in this lifetime do not come to that place where in my heart and in my mind, I change and agree with God. God, you're right. You're my creator. Your laws are right. I've sinned. I deserve to be punished. If that does not happen in your lifetime, um, then we will appear before God in our sins, under judgment, without a savior, without forgiveness of our sins. Um, when we talk about the idea of confession, um, the, the idea comes up of like a confessional booth in the Catholic Church. So here's the idea. Uh, if, I've, if I've sinned, you know, what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to go into the Catholic Church, go into the confessional booth, and uh, what do I do? I start confessing my sins. I start saying them out to the Catholic priest. Um, that's, that's not what the Bible teaches about confession at all. Um, in Romans chapter 14 and verse number 11, it says this, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to God. They'll confess to God. Uh, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins <clears throat> and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, if you've sinned against God, who are you supposed to go and confess your sins to? You're supposed to confess your sins to a priest or to a, a pastor or to a religious leader? Absolutely not. We need to go to God himself and confess our sin to him, to repent of our sins to him. Um, that's, that's what we need to do. If, uh, you know, I've been around people before where, uh, you know, they know I go to church or whatever. And uh, if they swear or something, they'll say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And many times I'll say to them, well, why are you saying sorry to me? Um, you've not sinned against me. I didn't tell you not to say those things. Um, you know that it's wrong what you just said or what you just did or what you're doing. You know that it's wrong because God put it in your heart that it's wrong. You sinned against him. It's him that you need to bring confession to, repentance and confession to him. So the question here tonight is, um, if you're watching, is have you repented? Uh, have you gotten to that place in your heart and in your mind where you rec a recognition, God is right and I am wrong? It doesn't matter how religious I think I am. It doesn't matter how many good things I do, how much I go to church or do good things or tell other people about God. Um, this is the fault of religion. It's self-righteousness. It's, it's uh, rags that tr are trying to cover up the heart, the, the, the true need that we have is a heart change. And the first part of that heart change is, is repentance. God, you're right, I'm wrong. It doesn't matter if I spent the rest of my life being a good person. If I dedicated the rest of my life to be a nun or to be a monk, I could give my whole life work and give every penny that I have to the poor, do all these religious things, memorize the Bible, um, you know, go around the world telling people about God. God, I know that none of those things, none of them would save me. I'm still in my sin. If I go do all those things, I'm going to go do it as a sinner. I need a, I need a heart change. I need something to happen in my heart. You're right, and I am wrong. Uh, this, is, this is what true repentance is from the Bible. Uh, and as we saw before, uh, repentance alone cannot save. Uh, we need repentance and true faith in Jesus Christ in order to be saved. Um, and, and why is that? Just to jump ahead 
real quick uh, before we get to next week. Um, why is it that we, uh, repentance is not enough? We, we also need to believe in Jesus. Uh, it's like we said, if I stand before a judge and, and truly repent, I'm still guilty. Okay, but what Jesus did for us, and this, and this is the good news that, that God wants everybody to know about, is that he's not expecting us to do anything. All of the work has already been done. Jesus Christ, he died for our sins. He rose from the dead. Today he sits at the right hand of the throne of God, and this is what the Bible calls Jesus. Calls him, him our high priest. He's the priest that we can go and confess our sins to. And the Bible says that he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. There's one God. There's one mediator between God and men. It's the man Christ Jesus. We don't need a church to be saved. We don't need religion to be saved. We don't need anything to be, our good works to be saved. We need a savior. We need the high priest, Jesus Christ. He's also called our advocate or our, our, our lawyer, the one that will stand in between us and God. I said, God, I'm, I'm a sinner. Um, I deserve to die. But Jesus, he's the one who steps in between me and God. He has the blood. He can pay for my sins. He can justify me before God. And uh, one of the sweetest uh, uh, titles that is given to Jesus is that of the Savior. He's the Savior. Um, us as mankind... We're under God's law. We're, we're doomed. Uh, we're, we're like a man that's drowning in the ocean all by himself. Uh, we, we have no hope in and of ourselves. We can't swim back from the middle of the ocean and get back to land. And Jesus is that one who loved us enough to come way out into the ocean, way out in, from heaven into this sinful, darkened world. And he came by and threw out his hands. He's calling today. Um, I don't know, wherever you are, uh, if you're watching this on TV, wh wherever you are, uh, if you know in your heart that uh, there's something missing, I, I know that none of my goodness will prevail, uh, I know that there's something wrong and I'm willing to repent, uh, um, I'm, I'm willing to believe, I believe in Jesus, um, tonight, wherever you are, I want to I wanna offer to, to pray together with you. If you know that you've sinned against God and, and you truly do want to repent, not to just get out of um, being judged or anything, but, but truly repenting, acknowledging, look, I have done wrong because God said it was wrong. Um, if that's you and, and God is showing you tonight uh, that the way to be forgiven is, is through believing in Jesus Christ and repenting of your sins, I want to offer to pray together with you this evening. Um, I was, uh, this, this happened to me. I was saved November 8th, 2005. And I'm, I'm glad that when somebody shared this message with me, uh, they didn't just leave me on my own, but they said, you know, I'm, I want to pray together with you. It's the first time I ever prayed in my life. And I want to offer to pray together with you right now. Again, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, for with the heart, men believe into righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, if that's you and, and you want to come to God this evening... Uh, why don't you pray together uh, with me this evening? Uh, God in heaven, uh, I, I know that I'm a sinner. Um, and I'm a sinner because uh, you are God and, and you, made, you made me, you made, you made right and wrong, and you made the laws, and I've broken them. I've lied, I've stolen things, uh, and it's wrong because you said it's wrong. And tonight, God, I, I want to be forgiven of my sins. Um, and I believe in you, Jesus. I, I, I'm, I'm not good enough on my own. I'll never be good enough to be saved. And I thank you that you did something for me, that you sent your son uh, to die for my sins, to die in my place, that the judgment of God came upon him. It should have come upon me, uh, but you love me and you're merciful and you want to forgive me. I believe in you, Jesus, that you rose from the dead, that you have life. You, you alone have the power to forgive sins. No man or no church, no priest, can forgive me. Only you can, Jesus. I believe you rose from the dead, and I'm asking you tonight, uh, please forgive my sins. Wash them in your blood and cause me to be right with God. I, I want to be a child of God. I want to be forgiven. I want to love you, God, and, and be righteous as your word says that I should be. And Jesus, thank you for this wonderful gift that you've promised, uh, the gift of eternal life. Help me to love you as you have loved me. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, uh, praise God. Uh, the, the Bible says this. Um, Jesus said these words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, if you've truly repented uh, of your sins and placed your faith, your dependence is in Jesus Christ. It's not in your own goodness or your own works. You can take confidence that God has forgiven your sins. Uh, again, in the Bible, the book of 1 John chapter 1 and verse number 9, uh, it says this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful. Who's faithful? God. God is faithful. He, he's faithful to His promises. He said if you confess your sins, um, that He is, he is uh, just, that He is able, He can righteously forgive our sins. He's able to because we have a sacrifice. Uh, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Um, truly repenting of our sins, it's not, a, it's not a continual thing that happens. It's a one-time event that the first time I acknowledge in my heart and in my mind, um, God, you're right, I'm wrong. Jesus is the way. I believe in you. It can be, it's settled. It's a done deal. Um, Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Um, now, uh, if you have uh, repented and believed, you can have assurance that, you, that you've been a, you've become a child of God, that your sins have been forgiven. Um, and just like uh, any other child, child that's in the world, um, obviously now um, Jesus dying for our sins is not a license to sin. Uh, we should not sin. The Bible says God forbid that we should sin. So as a child, if you do sin, um, you should repent and confess your sin to God, but um, don't feel as though you need to live up to a certain standard in order to be saved, in order to um, go to heaven. Uh, it's ne it, it never started with you being a good person, and you will never keep your salvation by doing good things. Um, you should obey God's law out of love, not because you have to to avoid judgment, um, but because you want to now that you've been forgiven. So praise God. Uh, thank, thank God that we have a Savior. Um, uh, come back again next week, Wednesday at 8 o'clock. And next week we're going to talk about uh, from the Bible what it means to believe in Jesus uh, so God bless you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Understanding the Gospel.